Julie, we gotta bounce. Social services are on the way. Why, hello there everyone. Fancy seeing you all here. And welcome to yet another edition of Football This Week. The series where I bring you the best, but more frequently the worst, of what football on social media has to offer. You lot have been receiving this series really well, as per usual. FTW fever has even spread to the back end of a moving car. But I'm afraid it's time for the international break. No, 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 trust me. I, I realise it's not the most enthralling thing. Costa Rica's managed manager Gustavo Matosas even resigned from the job because he was so physically bored of international football. Does it not say a lot about it when one of its own managers just literally gets so fed up he actually quits his own job? I've genuinely had enough. The, nothing good comes out of international qualifiers. It's literally so dull. Eight goals. I've seen trigger happy police officers less shocking than this. England beat Kosovo 5-3 in a Euro 2020 qualifier this week. Genuinely, this may well have been one of the most ridiculous games I've ever witnessed. And it started with Kosovo taking lead after just one minute of the game. It's fair to say the reaction of Kosovan commentators was absolutely priceless after Berisha's goal. <laughs> Berisha! Eventually, England did turn it round and in some style, scoring five goals before half time, including a brace for Jaden Sancho. But then two goals early in the second half made it 5 3 and gave Kosovo some hope. Honestly, if anyone missed the game, this is literally how both sides defended. Looking forward to Gareth Southgate's detailed analysis of our defensive display. England could have genuinely subbed on Jimmy from the under sevens and they would have actually performed better. I was really impressed by Kosovo actually. I don't know where they managed to get this intensity from. Go, Winter! Go, 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 go! It's, it's not tactic. Perhaps it's not right, the right run. But it's only here. I will, I will, uh, I want to, 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 to win the ball. I want to disturb Sushi. All right, that intensity, I've just sort of worked out where it's coming from. And it's lights out and away we go, 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 go. The Kosovan manager just seems to be annoyed by everything. I can't be arsed. We've conceded five goals to a team that's gassed at beating Tunisia. Bernard, mate, just wanted to let you know you're on TV, son. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. I, I pronounced that wrong. I meant to say I love the Queen. At the end of the day, we've conceded three goals to a team that was created in 2014. We've only marginally beaten a five-year-old. <laughs> that, that can't run. That's not allowed. Now, to be honest, I was impressed by Kosovo. There a good team. They've got some good young players as well. They'll grow and be decent in the future. England are just England. I don't know why we ever get hyped about them. Over in Scotland, it was a 4-0 defeat to Belgium, which has not gone down well. I mean, to be honest, is this not expected? I know the scoreline is not great. Belgium are a very good side. What is going wrong, though, with Scotland? Because they've got some decent players and an octopus has been to more major tournaments than them since 2000. So, over in France, the national team were playing Al Albania in a qualifier. It's just a shame that no one told the guy who's meant to research the national anthems. Whoever was in charge of this at the stadium accidentally played the Andorran national anthem instead of the Albanian one. Yeah, sorry boss, who did you say we were playing again tonight? Uh, it begins with an A. All right, top job, that'll do for me. If you're gonna just play random music over the national anthems, at least make it worthwhile. <laughs> You know what as well, the absolute best part of this is, after all of these shenanigans, they're playing Albania, but they played the Andorran national anthem. The stadium announcer apologizes to Armenia. Where did you even get that from? That's neither of the teams involved. That's the land of Henrik Mkhitaryan. Sorry, did, did you call? Oh, go away. I don't need to see that disgusting hairline. I've told you before. <laughs> Now, I don't mean to cause alarm, but I'm pretty sure that is a smoking child. I don't know what's going on in Turkey, because this kid genuinely looks like he should be doing year 10 algebra, not whipping out a cigar at a Turkish football match. So this kind of went viral over the course of the weekend. It turns out this child is not even a child at all. He's actually 36. 30? 
This boy, man, whatever, is 36 years of age. In what universe? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. His max height is three foot seven. Now, if you're a fan of English or Belgian football, you may be aware that Vincent Company's testimonial took place this week. However, there was a, just a tiny little bit of an issue with this whole situation because Vincent Company himself couldn't actually play in it. A hamstring injury has ruled Vincent Company out of his own testimonial. So welcome one and all to the testimonial. Hope you go on to enjoy it. We're sorry that Vincent couldn't grace you with his company during the course of this game. Could they not, you know, sort of just rearrange it, maybe? I mean, it's company's testimonial, and he can't even play in it at all. It's like Star Wars without a Skywalker. It's like E.T. without... Well, E.T. being in it. It's like the Marvel Universe without Spider- Actually, wait, no, I can't. Hello, all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. So someone made up a quote from Ruben Neves saying that when he played back at Porto, the team was shown videos of John Obi Mikel to take home and study. It then says that they used to call him the professor of football. It's not real. Someone's made it up. But John Obi Mikel found it, thought it was real, and posted it on his own Insta. Oh, John, you poor innocent boy. Yeah, they skill is tricky. <laughs> now, this is all well and good, but is that Scott McTominay? Whether it is or it isn't, it's a shithousery award in my opinion. <laughs> it's that time of the week once again though, folks. It is time for Still Nil Nil. And of course, this is a segment of the show where we talk about the best and worst of Sunday League football. Spoiler alert, it is pretty much always the worst. Uh, I can't lie. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, lads. I actually don't even know how to explain this week's video. So the team in red are on the attack. Now, I'm already seeing one issue. There's a the opposition goalkeeper has just come out and tried to tackle him. I will say that's not exactly normal. Neither is it the fact the other goalkeeper is also in the wrong end of the pitch. Now, one other thing I've thought about here is, well, you've got the team in red, but where actually is the other team? We haven't seen the other team yet. Now, I will be honest with you, I think we can categorize this as another abnormality. But it sets up a situation where the attacker in red has got a score past every single outfielder. This is his moment to do the unthinkable. <laughs> I give up. That's that. No, that's it. I've had enough with this segment. I'm done. I've had enough. Someone else can present it next week. That 60 shooting is gonna be 85 by next season. Believe that. <clears throat> All right, so listen, this has this could have gone better than it has, Rian. So then, like Janine was like, "Oh my God, no way could that possibly happen!" And then look, look at this. I was, I was trying to tell Julie that, like, you, you if I throw myself off this like, balcony now, will I survive? Because I'm genuinely considering. Meanwhile, in more feel-good news, N'Golo Kante was invited to the wedding of a Chelsea fan, and he actually attended. I actually love this man. Like, he's just so adorable. And finally, as Small country in Africa by the name of Djibouti have never ever got to the second round of African Cup of Nations qualifying. This year, they did. For the first time in their history, and one of my good friends, Kutsi, on YouTube has done series with them in the past. He's got an affinity to them. Him and his subscribers reacted to the final minutes of the game, and it is amazing. Oh, <laughs> 
And on that note, that concludes football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed. Obviously, with it being an international break, it might have been a bit more of a slow week. I apologize if that is the case. But let me know down in the comments section how I can improve this series. I'm always looking for the feedback when it comes to like segments or just certain things. If you enjoyed it though, slap a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Is it me? Is it me?